Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, and today I want to talk a bit more about Japan by discussing two of the largest breweries in that country, Kirin Ichiban and Asahi. Also, on the subject of Japan, if you didn't manage to check out the Sapporo episode, linked down below, I talk in that video a bit about the relationship between sort of beer and its place in the changing landscape of 1800s Japan. But to do a quick lightning round, basically for about 250 years, Japan was totally cut off from the outside world, foreign trade was virtually non-existent. But starting in the 1850s, an American naval squadron sailed into Tokyo Bay, demanded that the country open up its trade ports, that basically set off a chain reaction where the country started modernizing very quickly and sort of joining the global economy. So amidst this changing landscape, certain foreign traditions like the Western style of brewing beer, specifically the German style of brewing beer, started to take hold in the country. And with that, let's get to the episode. Kirin Ichiban was originally started as the Japan Brewery Company by an American, actually, of all people, uh, William Copeland. Mr. Copeland came to Japan in the 1860s, and he was one of a small but growing number of Westerners moving to the country as the nation was sort of just opening up. And I'm, by that, I mean just opening up. Copeland started up a brewery in 1869, and for context, that was only a year after the shogun was deposed. Now, it was more of a cottage industry, but nonetheless, um, it would actually make it really the oldest extant brewing facility of beer in Japan, of really of all time. Now, Copeland's brewery was not shut down by the more business-friendly Meiji government, and he was eventually able to turn his little Yokohama operation into an actual company called the Japan Brewery Company in 1885. And while Copeland himself wasn't German, uh, this German brewing tradition that you see with a lot of East Asian beers was still very much in play with Kirin because pretty quickly a number of German brewers were brought in to sort of assist with operations, help manage the brewery, and just, you know, make sure that all the products were um, up to snuff. I talked about this in the Sapporo episode, that Sapporo is the oldest brewery in Japan or the oldest brand of beer in Japan if you want to count sort of it as the first company that was sort of a real company. Uh, that was sort of 1876. But sure, if you want to start the clock at when Copeland was starting to brew beer in his backyard, and then you view that as sort of the antecedent of uh, Kiran Ichiban, then sure, you know you can go with that in 1869. Anyway, so in 1907, the Japan Brewery Company was renamed the Kirin Brewery Company because of the company's Kirin beer. And Kirin is actually the name of a mythological animal of Chinese origin. Kirin is basically the Japanese derivation of a Chinese word, Qilin, and this Qilin, or Kirin, is a creature that basically has the head of a dragon and the scales of a dragon, usually antlers, and then the body, legs, and hooves of a horse. While some people have compared it to a giraffe or even a unicorn, it's, it's really its own thing. And so this animal, of course, you can see it on the beer label. Now, over the course of the 20th century, Kirin established itself as one of the major beer companies in Japan, jockeying for market share with its rivals. The company reached its pinnacle of power in the 1970s when Kirin controlled an estimated 60%, yes, 60% of all beer in Japan, which is a lot of beer for a lot of people. Now, maybe because of that, or at least that helping things along, um, Kirin also expanded into fields aside from just brewing. Now, while in the 20s and 30s they got involved in things like soft drinks production, you know, and, and there have been other breweries that, that do things like that, they really got into totally non-beer related industries in the late 20th century, focusing at first on things like communications and engineering. These days, the company focuses not just on, of course, food and drink, but also on the fields of healthcare, health sciences, and pharmaceuticals, along with the sort of necessary research development and engineering divisions one would require to sort of push those fields of study forward. And a lot of this study is actually carried out at Kirin's sort of central research institute. Aside from all of that, the company also has a very heavy focus on environmentally friendly practices, and they've also had a campaign to stop harmful drinking. So remember when I said that San Miguel is the only brewery I've ever heard of that is focused on completely non-beer related industries like oil refineries and mining? Well, I guess I got to recant that statement because Kirin is on the list as well. The Asahi Brewery was founded in Osaka, Japan in 1889, and it was originally known by the very inventive name Osaka Beer Company. And again, I talked about this in the Sapporo episode, but you can really see a trend where as Japan was opening up and modernizing and an industry like beer was developing, all of these companies were basically founded around the same time, sort of mid 1870s, 1880s. And my understanding is this is actually true of a lot of other companies in Japan across a variety of industries. As the Asahi Brewery, as it eventually came to be known, was continuing to grow, starting in sort of 19 1906-1907, Asahi merged with the company that 
would later be called Sapporo, to form something called Dainippon Beer, or Great Japan Beer. And then this company, or conglomerate, basically dominated the Japanese beer market until right after World War II, at which point it was broken up because of antitrust law, and then Asahi once again sort of became its own thing. And then in 1987, Asahi launched Asahi Super Dry, focusing on incorporating into both the beer flavor and the company image the idea of the Japanese culinary term of karakuchi, which is a word that can be translated to mean dry in some context, but especially when you're talking about beverages. Now, the release of Asahi Super Dry was a huge deal in Japan, as maybe not overnight, but very, very quickly, it really refocused the sort of country's interest in beer flavors towards this idea of dry beer. And so if you can't guess, this allowed Asahi to really come out in front as the top beer producer in Japan and pick up a lot of market share in the process. However, starting in sort of the 1990s, but really into the sort of 2000s and, and 2010s, faced with a declining population and stagnating beer sales domestically, Asahi focused on expanding operations by really acquiring other breweries around the world. And their focus was really on sort of continental Europe. They picked up labels like Rolsch, Peroni, and Pilsner Urquell as a way to continue expanding the company. Currently, Asahi has a somewhat diversified set of company holdings. Asahi focuses on producing soft drinks, some food, and spirits. But beer still remains really the company's core industry. So Kiran Ichiban and Asahi are two of what are generally called the big four beer producers in Japan, the other two being Suntory and Sapporo. Now, of these four, Asahi is the largest. Kiran's next. Suntory is actually an interesting company because in the US, Suntory is largely known for producing spirits, especially Japanese whiskey. And though the company does make beer, it's not available in the US. And then in fourth place, we have Sapporo. Though of those four, Sapporo, my understanding is, really has by far and away the largest export footprint of the four companies. Now, between those four companies, that's pretty much the entire beer market in Japan. It's almost 99% or thereabouts, meaning that Japanese craft brewing is a tiny, tiny industry. And part of the reason for this was that really up until the 1990s, if someone wanted to start making beer in Japan, they had to get a license from the government and they had to already start producing beer at a certain volume, whereby it basically was impossible for someone to start up a you know, micro brewery. But now that that law has been taken away and craft brewing in Japan is just really starting to get going, it'll be interesting to see how that industry develops. So both Kirin and Asahi are pretty much what I would call single beer companies, in that each company makes one primary beer, and that beer is named after the company. So if you couldn't guess, we will be trying Kirin Light. Well, surprise, we're actually trying three beers. This is a light beer, and I just figured, you know, I haven't tried a light beer on this channel for a while, and I might as well just to show you sort of what else Kirin makes. Kirin Ichiban the flagship beer of the Kirin Brewery. This is an all malt beer. What that means is it's going to have a very sort of round, full flavor, and could be described as, in some ways, heavier than some of its competitor beers. Asahi Super Dry. Having been described as transforming the modern Japanese beer industry, this is overwhelmingly the single beer that Asahi produces. And it's a dry lager. What that means is it has very little malt in it, and it's much more sort of hoppy and crisp and, well, dry in its flavor profile. But to be clear, it's not going to be overly hoppy in the way sort of an IPA is. Really, it's its own thing. Asahi Black. Asahi's newest release, having launched in 2015, I believe, this beer, despite having a deep black velvety color to it, should still have a lighter crisp flavor similar to the flagship Asahi Lager. However, black should also have some roasted malt in it, which would give a more complex flavor profile. <laughs> 